What does the Elon 100 PV do? The Elon 100 PV system is Quickhart's solar PV alternative to a solar thermal water heater system. It allows you to draw DC power from rooftop solar PV panels to run your existing electric water heater using a single compact unit. The system can be connected to mains power and automatically switches between AC and solar power supply according to your hot water needs and the weather. Hence you can run your water heater entirely off-grid if solar conditions allow and you have mains power as a backup if needed. The system requires no inverter and no battery and can be connected to standard water heater elements up to 4 kW and using standard thermostats. The complete Elon 100 system comprises of a control switch, a connection box, a cable to connect them and an element adapter for the geyser thermostat and element. All these items can also be purchased individually. It also monitors your heater's performance and alerts you in case of DC insulation failures. The Elon 100 is the simplest, most cost-effective and convenient way to meet the SANS 10400 XA requirements for new properties. And it is the most affordable solar water heating solution and solar PV unit in its class. It is maintenance free and carries a five year extended warranty, which requires registration. Disclaimer, this is not a full solar PV installation training course. Only trained solar PV technicians should install solar PV modules. All Elon 100 installations require sign off and issuance of a supplementary electrical COC certificate of compliance by a registered electrician. Tools and parts required. Today we're going to install an Elon 100 PV water heating system. In order to do this, we will need these parts and tools. Our Elon 100 controller and our control dial fitted with a 10 meter cable and a green element adapter. Some black 4 mm solar cable and some red solar cable black for negative and red for positive DC connections. We will also need about 3 meters of 2.5 mm twin and earth cable and then some sprag for the DC wiring inside the roof, a four-way sub-DB box for the DC isolator and fuse and some additional glands for the sprag, some 2.5 square millimeter earth cable for the grounding of the PV panels and mounting hardware, then the tools we will need are as follows. First, a selection of screwdrivers, including a star screwdriver and a flat screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters, a 17mm spanner, a multimeter with clamp to test the voltage and current, both AC and DC, some cable ties to fix the sprag to the timbers. We have a 20 to 25mm hole saw to be able to drill through steel and the tiles a battery powered or cordless drill and a tech screw bit. We will need some tech screws or similar in order to fix the attachments to the roof and the roof trusses, some small self-tapping screws to secure the position of the roof hook. We will also need a pair of MC4 connectors with their appropriate ferrules and mounting hardware. Of course the quantity of the components you need will vary according to the size of the installation. The hardware that we supply is NAS hardware which is made from a polymer, some mid clamps and some end clamps and we will also use roof attachments of different types for different roofs. This type is used for clip lock roofing, this type for IBR profile roofs and this type for the corrugated profile roofs. And then of course the roof hook in the background which is for a tiled roof and then two pieces of aluminium rail. Please note, personal protective equipment for working at heights must be worn and used at all times, such as safety harnesses and fall arrest or fall restraint systems. Installation of the solar PV panels. To begin installing our system on a tile roof, we first need to push up the roof tiles in order to find a suitable truss onto which we can fix the roof hook Next, we will fix the roof hook using a tech screw or suitable alternative. Once the roof hook is attached to the truss, 
we can close the tiles. In this case, we're installing a two panel kit, which requires four roof hooks and two 2.5 meter sections of aluminum rail. The rail profile slides onto the fixing bolts. Once in the correct position, fix the bolts firmly to the rail. Then the rail slides onto the bolts. Next, we're gonna fit the cable, put in the sprag, and then open the tiles we're going to push the cable inside. And then we tighten the cable onto the rail and then we're going to install the panels. So now we're going to start preparing the cable. The first step is to prepare the cable for installation by fixing the MC4 connectors to the relevant cable. So we're going to strip back a section of cable and fix the ferrule, followed by crimping the ferrule and then slide it into the female MC4 connector and tighten it. Then we repeat the process on the red cable, but using the male and fitting it into the female MC4 connector. And then finally fitting the ring terminal to the earth cable. Next we're going to feed the three cables through the sprag. Here we are measuring up the length of the cable required as we already know the length of the sprag. We're going to feed the cable into the sprag, and as this is a short piece, we're just feeding it manually. But you can use a fish tape when fitting a longer length. We're going to lift the tile to feed the wiring through, and next we push the cable through the roof. The tile has been pre-cut so as to form a good seal after the cable is fed underneath. We need to position the wires as once the panels are replaced, we won't necessarily be able to access the point where it enters through the roof. And then we install the photovoltaic or PV modules. First we fit the end clamps by inserting them in the rail and twisting. Now we're going to put the panel onto the roof and secure it. And once we've placed the panel on the roof, we will make sure that the MC4 leads are free and accessible. Then, while holding the panel in place, we're going to tighten the end clamps using a ratchet and 10mm sockets. The earth cable is going to be connected underneath the nut of this end clamp. And the end and the mid clamps are electrically connected to the nut and the module's frame. Now we're going to insert the middle clamps Next, we place the second panel on the rails. Then we connect the MC4 connectors as the modules are connected in series. Then we fasten the middle clamps. And lastly, we finish by fastening the end clamps. We don't connect the last two connectors yet. We will do so when the DC box is installed. Installing the Elon box and the DC box. Now that our solar panels are installed on the roof and the cables are fed through from the roof, we're going to connect the cables to the fuse and DC circuit breaker. The red cable, which means positive, running from the solar panels, must be fed through this grey fuse box, which will protect against excessive current and prevent short circuits. And then your black or negative is connected to the other side of the breaker. First connect the green and yellow earth cable to the earth bus bar to prevent shocks. And then you connect another red positive cable through to the breaker. And then your black or negative is connected to the other side of the breaker. Now the panels are connected. Now we can go back to the roof and connect the positive side of the male and the female that runs to the DC box. The panels are now live and sending current. Next we connect the DC side of the Elon unit to the breaker.
connect the green and yellow earth cable to the earth bus bar to prevent shocks. And then fit the red and black cables, taking care to connect red to red and black to black, as seen. And then connect the wires into the Elon box. You will see on the Elon box the positive and negative solar input terminals are marked, and the negative sign is marked with a zero. So we connect the black wire to that terminal, and the red cable we connect it to the positive terminal, which has a plus sign, to the right of the negative terminal. Then we take these two cables, red and black, connect one end to the thermostat terminals on the Elon unit and the other end to the thermostat itself. As you can see, your element cables have an earth wire attached and that must also be connected. And now our Elon box is wired up. Next, on the AC side, we first switch off the isolator. And now we're going to disconnect the AC wires from the thermostat. Step one is to loosen the element cover. And then we use our tester. We switch it to AC volts mode. And just to make sure that the isolator is working, we test to see if there's any power connected to the thermostat. The tester shows no charge, which means there is no voltage on the element so we can safely work on it. We unscrew and disconnect the cables and we can remove the wires from the live terminals and connect them to the mains power terminals of your Elon unit. As you can see, there are now three earth connections. The main incoming earth, another one connected to the element and the third one connected to the panels. Once all your wires are fitted, we will use our pair of long nose pliers to pull on each of the wires, just to ensure that all the wires are securely connected. If a wire is not fastened nicely, it will come out, in which case we will refit it and secure it properly. In many cases, installation problems are caused by a loose cable connection. Now we're going to pull out the thermostat and we're going to fit it into this green PC board. The board has a fuse inside it, so when your thermostat gets stuck, it will pop the fuse and then the Elon unit will stop powering the heater. So once our thermostat is fitted into the board, we can insert it into the element like this. Remember to ensure that the two pins are properly inserted into the element so that we don't make a hot connection. To double check this, turn the thermostat and if the PC board doesn't turn with it, that means the board is securely fitted. Okay, so now we have two wires, the thermostat wire and the element wire. Note that the element wire has an earth wire attached to it, whereas the thermostat wire doesn't. Next, we will insert the two cables. The thermostat's wires don't need to be on live and neutral. In other words, they can be connected any way around, because they are only feeding into a cutoff switch. Now we're going to connect the element wires and secure them. And now we can just connect our earth wire. And once our earth is fitted, we crimp it. Now all our wiring is connected. Again, we check that all the wires are securely connected. And then we're going to plug in the control dial into this port. Make sure that you seat it properly, you'll hear a click sound. And once that's done, we're going to turn the control dial to the solar only setting. And then we'll test the DC side of the system. So we switch our multimeter to the DC volts setting in order to test the voltage that's flowing from the panels. So we contact the positive and negative terminals and if we get a reading, we will know that the panels are producing voltage. Next, we're going to activate the fuse and test the voltage again. Our live connection is going through the fuse and back into our breaker over here. So if we test at the breaker and we still have voltage, then we know that the fuse is working. If not, then the fuse is broken. Now we test the voltage on the top of the breaker, and if we still have voltage, then our loop is complete. 
Then we switch on our breaker, which will now start feeding power to our Elon box. If we test here and pick up voltage, then we know our breaker is working correctly. Next, we move down to our Elon box and test the voltage here. If we have voltage, then we know that the Elon will start receiving power from the DC side. Just make sure that your polarity is correct, because if we get a negative voltage reading here, then we know that our two wires need to be swapped around. So now we're going to switch on our AC isolator. Note that there is a 5 minute delay before the Elon will show red on your control dial. The green light on the solar only setting needs to start flashing, and then we can test our voltage on our element side to measure the voltage flowing from our panels. And if the element kicks in, there must be a drop on the voltage side. So if we test our voltage on DC, it must show zero voltage. If we turn our thermostat to minimum temperature when it clicks, then the green light is going to be stable on our control dial. And then we can also test to make sure that the thermostat is also working correctly, in which case we will get a reading of between 11 and 14 DC volts on your multimeter. Once you've tested there, be sure to test at the Elon box 2, where on the thermostat terminals we will need to get the same voltage reading that showed on the thermostat, also between 11 and 14 DC volts. We can then switch the thermostat on again, and next we adjust the thermostat to the client's requirements, usually between 50 and 65 degrees Celsius. And then we'll see that our green light will start flashing again if your heater has not yet reached the required temperature. So that's how we test our DC sound. Now we're going to test the AC side. So the 5 minute delay on the Elon box on the AC side should now be completed. So we'll need to see a red light showing on your control dial. And then if the mains is showing red, you need to turn the control dial all the way to mains. And our mains is then active. Next we take our multimeter and switch it back to the AC volt setting. Then we test our AC voltage on the Elon. And we need to get a reading of between 230 and 240 volts. If our thermostat clicks in, the red light will start flashing, and then we can test the element for amps. A correct amps reading on a 3 kW element is between 12 and 13 amps. On a 4 kW element, the correct reading is about 18 amps. Now that we've finished commissioning the system, we can turn the Elon control dial to its number 3 setting. Number 3 means that the system will use solar during the day from early morning until late afternoon, and will top up with grid power at night. So now everything has been tested and we can start closing up the system, replacing the covers and screwing them in place. We've fitted our box horizontally and this ensures that if our cabling is running vertically from the roof, any moisture that flows down will not seep into the box and cause damage to it. This way the moisture will stay inside the conduit. And now we have installed our Elon box and DC box.